Martin, ever since I've been a child, whenever I think about the universe and its size, I feel queasiness in my stomach the way somebody standing on a tall building feels. This has not changed. I can't think of anything more uh, exhilarating and, and uh, ma majestic than thinking of, of the size of, of the universe. Mm. Well, the one that doesn't diminish even when you've been thinking about it for 25 years yeah. in the way that I have. So. <laughs> <laughs> How can we begin to understand, get our arms around, so to speak, the, the meaning of, of, of the universe? Pe people use different terms like, like cosmos or world or reality or all reality or universe or multiverse. How, how do we begin to understand this? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, there are semantic questions about what we mean by the universe, but uh, most of us mean by the universe the largest domain that astronomers can study. And that domain has, of course, been growing with the advance in our understanding and the advance in technology. Uh, if you'd asked um, someone in the 17th century, Newton or someone, they would have uh, realized that our solar system contained the planets orbiting the sun, and there was the firmament of fixed stars, <laughs> whose distance was rather uncertain at that time. If you'd asked uh, Einstein in 1905 how big the universe was, he would have thought it was the size of what we now call the Milky Way, our galaxy, which extends a distance of maybe 30,000 light years. But we now know, and we've known since the work of Hubble and others in the 1920s, that our Milky Way, our galaxy, is just one of zillions of galaxies which we see with large telescopes. And the most distant of those, which we can observe, are so far away. The light set out more than 10 billion years ago. Mm. And that implies that the distance, crudely speaking, is at least 10 billion light years. So we have a universe containing billions of galaxies, and we can probe with our telescopes this huge domain. Now, a light <laughs> year is the distance light travels in a year, mm -hmm. going at approximately 186,000 miles a second, an enormous, an enormous mm -hmm. number. So with our best telescopes, which I assume is the Hubble telescope in, in orbit, what is the size that we can literally see? We can see objects whose light set out about 10 or 11 billion years ago. And the important point about that is that we've learned that our universe had a beginning, in some sense, nearly 14 billion years ago. And so when we look at our distant galaxies, we see them not as a galaxy is now, but we see them in their formative stages. We see them looking very different. And that's why astronomers have, in a sense, an advantage over geologists, because they can actually look at the past rather than infer it from fossils. And one of the big developments in astronomy has been the ability to actually study these galaxies very far away and far back in time. And despite this progress, there is a theoretical limit to our observational horizon, because if our universe had a finite age, this means that there's a finite length of time for which light's been able to travel, and therefore, in a sense, a maximum distance. So we look out towards a sort of horizon. And that horizon is, in a sense, the edge of our observable universe. But it's not the edge of reality, not even the edge of what we should perhaps call our universe. Well, how big is that? If it's been approximately 14 billion years since mm -hmm. the since the what we yes. think is the beginning yes uh, and the universe has been expanding mm -hmm. how big is this volume of space that we can at least have possible access to yes well it's rather hard to define that exactly because it's as though you're measuring distances on a piece of elastic which is stretching yes, as yes. you measure it right, but right, uh, right. it's um, a few tens of billions of light years however you define it so what we think of the, as the horizon of our observations is really a sort of artificial horizon, just as if you're in the middle of an ocean. When you go up the mast of a ship, you see a horizon around you. But uh, there's no reason to think, if you're in the middle of an ocean, that the ocean stops just beyond your horizon. There may be more of the same, and the same is the case of the universe. In fact, we have indirect reasons for believing that our universe goes on a long way beyond what we see. Even the universe that began with the Big Bang, without any unusual theories? Uh, Indeed. Yes, it would be very surprising if there was no more to our universe, no more to the aftermath of our Big Bang than what we happen to be able to see within our present horizon. But, of course, this leads to a more fascinating speculation in a way, which is that perhaps even the aftermath of our Big Bang 
may not be the entirety of physical reality. There may be other big bangs. There may be other so-called universes. Now, pedantic philosophers will, of course, say we should define the universe as all of physical reality. And if we do that, that's fine. But then we would have to have a new word for what astronomers have always called the universe and call that the meta-galaxy or something. But I would say that given that the multiverse idea is still speculative, the best thing is to stick with the idea universe for what astronomers have traditionally called the universe, which is what we can observe. And then we do need a new word like multiverse for this more grander concept of domains that make up part of physical reality, but which are beyond the realm of direct observation by us. Now, what's clear is that there's no chance for traditional methods mm -hmm. of communication, light waves, electromagnetic ra radiation, to communicate between anything mm -hmm. beyond that. Right. But, but then how can we have any confidence that, that there's something there? What are the mechanisms? Well, only indirect. I think uh, if we understood our universe better and its beginning and the Big Bang, then the idea of other Big Bangs or the idea that the universe was far vaster than we can see may be a direct consequence. <coughs> so I don't think you have to be able to uh, test everything to regard it as part of science. You need to have it based on some theory that which you can test. So if we had a theory of the early Big Bang, which was based on physics we can test. And if that theory predicted as a consequence that the universe was a certain immense size or that our Big Bang was one of many, then we would take those predictions seriously, even though we couldn't test them directly, because they'd be the consequence of a theory that we believed in for other reasons.